In this lesson, we are going to discuss vector spaces. So vector space is really the heart of linear algebra. Um, we really can't do anything um, in linear algebra without these, without the idea of vector spaces. And, and that's also true for other topics in math as well. So before we define what a vector space is, uh, there's just a, uh, some notation I need to uh, I need to go through. So if we have a point, okay, just one, just like this, one point. So we're going to call this, this is R0, okay. So we're working with real values here, okay, um, and not complex values, okay. So if I take a line and I, if I draw a line through that point, okay, so my point is here. Okay, so this is the origin. This is at zero. Okay, and you have positive n and a negative n. So this becomes r. This is what we call r1, or just simply r. So that's basically the real line. Okay. Now, if I take this uh, positive part of the real line, and if I rotate it up 90 degrees, then we get this. Okay. okay. And then, so this is, this is the positive end. This goes to the positive end. And then over here, the opposite of this, we have the negative. Okay. And then down here, taking the opposite, we get negative here. So this is actually form, this is actually in a plane. So we call this R2. Okay. The third one, okay, the third case is if you have a, if you have, let's say, this is a positive, you have positive up here. And let's say this is coming out towards you. And we can call this, um, let's say this is positive. Okay. All right. So this is, in this case, this is what we call R3. Okay. All right. So we have R0. R1, okay. R2, R3, okay. So you have the real line, the, the point, the real line, the plane, and then the, the three dimensions, okay. So anything bigger than this, anything going beyond R3, uh, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't visualize the geometry. So we have to rely on the theorems, okay, and we have to rely on. The, the concepts and that's why the vector spaces are very important because without vector spaces we, we can't really visualize what we're, what we're trying to deal deal with okay so anything above this okay all these vector spaces actually is, um, can hold true for any dimension okay and so dimension is something we'll talk about later on so for example like the plane the dimension is two uh, for something in 3d it's 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 three like three dimensions so r3 Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and um, define what a vector space is. Okay. So first off, we need to uh, make some assumptions here. We're assuming that this is a non-empty space. Okay. So a vector space is a non-empty space okay not empty set or I could say set let's call that V okay of objects okay Okay, which are defined by the, let's say, which are defined by the uh, following operations, okay. operations or we can say um, axioms okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna let so we're gonna let U V W okay belong to V okay and where V is a vector a space and uh, C and D are scalar values so in this case real values okay. So these axioms I'm about to state, they're going to be true for all, for all U, V, and W, and for all of C, D. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, the first one, okay. Okay, actually I'm just going to, just to save on some space. Just, okay. The first one is that it says that if you add, you take any two vectors from, from V, and you add them together, and if that vector is in V, then that's that's called the closure property. Okay, so U added to V if that belongs to the vector space. Okay, that's the first axiom. Axiom. So this is the closure property. Okay. Secondly, uh, we have the commutative property, which means you have U plus V. This is the same as V plus U okay. for that's for commutative property third okay, is the associative property so if U plus V okay added to W so that's the same thing as taking U Right? Or taking V, if you add V and W, and you add it to U. So the, so it doesn't matter which two you add first, U or V, or V and W. Okay, you're going to get the same result. So this is going to be the associative property. Okay, fourth one. Um, there exists a zero vector. Okay. So there exists a zero vector. Again, this has to belong in the vector space, such that when you take that zero vector and you add it to any vector in V, okay. You're going to get back the same vector. Okay. All right. Fifth one. Okay. For all. For all u in the vector space, there exists. Okay. There exists. A vector minus v, or sorry, minus u. Okay, that also has to be in the vector space. Okay, such that u plus minus u is equal to the zero vector. Okay. Okay. So without five, we can't have four. Okay. All right. So both four and five work together. Okay. Six. You take a scalar. Uh, we said let C be a, so C is a scalar here. So you take the scalar and multiply by U. That's got to be in the same vector space. Okay. Seven. Okay. If you take a scalar and you multiply it by take two vectors, add them together, and you multiply by scalar, then that says that uh, C times U is equal, right? It's going to be added to C times V. Okay. So that is the, uh, that is the uh, distribution property uh, under scalar. 
eighth one. Okay, you have c plus d. Again, those are scalars times u times the vector u. This is the same as saying c times u plus d times u vector. Again, that is that is the uh, distribu distribution property for for vector u. Okay, ninth one. Okay, you have c times d times u. This is the same as, okay, if you multiply the two scalar values and then multiply that with u, you'll get the same value, okay? Tenth one, you take one times any vector, any vector u and v, it's going to give you back u, okay? So it preserves the identity under the uh, multiplication of one, okay? So those are your ten, those are the ten axioms. Okay, all 10 of these have to be satisfied for this to be, for, for V to be a vector space. Okay, so I'm going to go through some examples now, okay, of vector space. Here's some three, these are the three most common ones that we'll be working with. Okay, so here's some examples of vector spaces. First example basically is the set of polynomials. Okay, so the set of polynomials, and we denote this by usually they denote this by p subscript of n of degree at most n. Okay, in the form, okay, in, in the form of P of T equals to A0 plus A1T, okay, plus A2T squared dot 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 plus A N T to the N. Okay. All right, so remember, so a0, a1, a2, an, those are your coefficient values, okay? So any set, so any polynomial is in, a, is any set of polynomials is in a vector space. And we're actually going to, I'm going to prove this on the next part, okay? The second one, okay, the second is the set of all Uh, n by n matrices. Okay, so m could be equal to n or even vice versa. So this gives you, this not only talks about this is uh, this could also be a four square matrices. Okay, all right. Third one. Uh, the infinite, the infinite dimensional space. Okay. So that, okay, that's denoted by R infinity, meaning that uh, the vectors have infinitely many components. So for example, uh, let's say x. Let's say x is equal to. Uh, let's say say one two one two. Okay, and it keeps going on forever. 
So that's a that's an infinitely uh, dimensional vector there. So this also so these are also vector spaces, but but these we don't uh, we don't talk about the infinite the infinite dimensional uh, too much in this course because that's actually um, those are used in another higher level course. So the main ones that we focus on are going to be one and two. Okay. So like I said in another in another lesson, I'm going to prove. Uh, that the set of polynomials is a vector space. And so for, to do that, we have to go through each axiom and verify it. Okay?